Good day to all of you. I am Dr. Ganesh. Welcome to another chapter of Eat for Health. Today, I'm going to talk about a topic that uh, is of concern throughout the world. As you know, today the uh, coronavirus pandemic has taken the world by surprise. In just a span of uh, eight months, it has taken hundreds of thousands of lives and millions affected. But there is one pandemic that has been going on since the 1950s. For more than 50 years, it has consumed the world, taken a toll in many lives, and is the cause of escalation of healthcare cost throughout the world and that pandemic is called the obesity pandemic this pandemic is a global killer if you think the coronavirus has killed hundreds of thousands of people in a, just a span of eight months, the obesity pandemic has killed hundreds of millions of lives worldwide since the late 50s until now. And the numbers are staggering and it has been increasing ever since on a yearly basis. We wonder why is it happening? Why is this happening to the lives of most people? There's only one reason for it. When you say, oh, he's fat because, you know, he's, you know, his family is all that way, that size. It is a false belief because generally genetic only make up 2 to 3% of the causes of most diseases. Everything has to do with our lifestyle. And the main reason, when you say lifestyle, this doesn't separate with lifestyle because we all have to live. We all have to provide nutrition from the body for the body. So the diet is the main cause. What we eat, what we put into our mouth determines our body's health. Well, the question is, are we aware? Are we actually aware of what we are eating? Or we are just merely eating just for the taste? Oh, it tastes good. Just eat. But do we actually know what are we eating? What are we eating? What are we putting in our mouths? Is this, do we say to ourselves, is this going to give us the nutrition that my body needs? It is going to provide good health and going to sustain my body's energy levels. It's going to cleanse my body. Do we say this to our food before we put it into our mouth? No. Most of us, 99% of us, just eat whatever is tasty, whatever tastes good, we just eat it. Because it simply tastes good. We have to change our culture of eating. Let alone our eating habits. A lot of people tell, tell me, doctor, you know, I don't eat much. You know, I take only, I don't take dinner. I only take breakfast. Sometimes I take lunch and I'll take an early snack before 6 p.m. We want, but the person still puts on weight. We wonder why. You just have to ask, what is the quality of food are you putting into your mouth? You can take two slices of bread, jam and butter, and it doesn't look like much of calories. But it looks like a small meal, but just that two slices of bread alone will give you 200 calories. Your jam and butter spread will give you another extra 100 calories. You take a tea with milk and sugar, it will give you another 150 calories. You've got a clean 500 calories for breakfast there. What about a person who's taking fried noodles with oil and egg? 
that serving alone is about more than 500 calories and he'll take a drink that is sweet another 200 calories the quality of food we put in matters most it determines our body's health entirely let me give you an overview on the diet that we eat in Asian diets and in the Western diet so our diet the Malaysian diet is a typical diet of varieties usually we call it a mixed rice diet take for example uh, most of us now are either lazy to cook at home or we are just you know busy with our lives work so we want to get a quick bite or a quick meal available so restaurants have been the mainstay of our food nowadays our Malaysian diet for example we call it uh, most Malaysians love what they call as a mixed rice a mixed rice it will comprise of at least one vegetable or maybe two vegetables one or two vegetables and maybe one meat serving and maybe you might add an egg so one fried egg this is very typical you know two to three dishes one fried egg and of course uh, uh, rice plus curry or a stew so this is a typical mixed rice in Malaysia. I call this the Malaysian average diet. The Malaysian average diet. The mad diet. You have processed oils in almost every dish here. And most of the oils are recycled. As you know in the restaurant foods. Okay, so you are getting at least between 600 to 800 calories of of uh, of fats and oils in just this meal and we call it an average diet for a Malaysian because and that's that's the nutrition content is very less most of the vegetables are very overly fried the meat it's either fried or cooked in oil and the egg of course you see it's already fried so there's a lot of calories in each one of it so just imagine and every day we take this much of calories we are just adding more and more calories why simply because we are taking very very little fiber very little fiber just too little too little fiber a lot of the process that goes to uh, food that goes in uh, that's processed by our gut simply gets absorbed and stored as fats and calories into our bodies so what happened to all these fats accumulating in our body keeps on accumulating over time you just get your body just gets broken up eventually that's where you you are prone to a lot of other chronic illnesses because of that right so how about the other diet the uh, western diet what is known as take for example the american diet the standard american diet it's a sad diet it consists of very high processed meat so meat, very high in meat, very high in uh, uh, carbs from potatoes, fries, that's very high in oil, that's already calories again, and very little vegetables. 
meats can be your grilled chicken, your steaks, and whatnot. So these are the standard American diet. That's why there are so many Americans that are overly obese. And it's, it's a growing trend now in the Asian countries like Malaysia. So something has to be done. Doctors have to upgrade themselves in nutrition. Very important to explain to their patients. We have to give education on the value and nutrition of food. They have to understand food. If you don't understand the value of nutrition of every food, you cannot understand the, what is really a proper healthy diet. So it's very crucial to know the foods that you eat. What are the, what are the reasons of gain weight, of rapid uh, weight gain? Another thing, lifestyle. Lack of exercise. Eat, work, sleep. A lot of people are doing this. Eat, work and sleep. There is no relaxation. There is no exercise. There is no uh, uh, some activity. Gardening, cycling, uh, going for a hiking, mountain climbing. Nothing. People are just too busy making money but neglecting their health. What's the point of making money and having a lot of uh, wealth when you know your health is going downhill and you don't even know your time will just come at any moment. We cannot take this for granted. So these are the reasons and also our diet and of course, uh, certain uh, drugs that uh, promote weight gain, like hormonal drugs, our oral contraceptive pills, drugs that can alter your body's metabolism. Let me tell you one thing about weight losing pills. They don't work. They lose, they help you to lose weight for a short period of time, but you will gain back your weight twice faster than how you lost it before. And furthermore, it's a drug that will give you side effect in your side effects to your body, which means they are toxic to your body. It is absolutely not a necessity to take those uh, weight loss pills. They don't do your body good at any way. So these are the common reasons, lifestyle, diet, and uh, certain drugs that causes our weight gain. What was me, what, what we must do to prevent this from happening, from our weight gaining, uh, from gaining weight? We have to change our lifestyle. We have to change. We have to be disciplined. It takes a lot of discipline to change. We have to make it a point to be aware of the food that we are taking in, into our body. We, we have to understand that food. First and foremost, food has to be high in fiber. Am I taking enough fiber? Am I taking enough fibers? High fiber foods come from grains, beans, lentils, legumes, and of course vegetables and fruits. They are rich in fiber. There is no other food source that has high fiber as uh, vegetables, fruits, and uh, grains. Those fibers will prolong your body, your digestion, and also provide good. Uh, bacteria health in your body and also prevent reduces the absorption of fats 
excess fats into your body. Fiber helps to flush out excess fats from our body. We must, that much we must know about fiber. And we have to take good amount of vegetables, fruits, and legumes, that's your beans, your lentils, and reduce on meat products and meat products. And also reduce in oils. You see my previous videos on oils, I've mentioned oils are just pure calories. And if you heat up oil, you create a lot of oxidation there. You're bringing in oxidation to your body, which means you're causing more rust to take place in your body. Be it olive oil, coconut oil, sesame oil, canola oil, palm oil, all oils are fats. Heating, in, heating them up won't, do, uh, up won't do any good. So we have to be cautious of the oil we use to use it as less as possible. Try to practice cooking with using less oil. Measure your oil with a spoon. Just enough to prevent uh, food from sticking. We don't need excess oil for... Because oil by itself does not provide help for our body. Because we got enough fats from the fibers we are taking from vegetables and fruits uh, alone. And meat gives us excess of fats. So we have to reduce the amount of intake of meat. So now uh, I'm going to uh, show you how to make one drink that is uh, helps in uh, burning down fats in our body. This drink is so simple to make. As I mentioned before about a particular spice known as uh, uh, Siragam that is in Tamil. So it is known as the cumin seed. This cumin seed has is known to have good uh, powerful fat burning properties. So I'm going to show you how to make a simple fat burning tea which for those who are overweight trying to lose weight they can take this as a daily uh, uh, tea to help them to uh, lose their weight but they cannot just depend on taking this tea this tea is uh, it assists and accelerate weight loss they need to do their exercises they need to eat healthy so here I have this is cumin seeds and I have a small piece of ginger here and some honey and here is just a mesh to strain the the uh, the spice later huh? when we put it up with hotter water. So now first we'll heat up some water and we'll take two spoons of cumin seed okay. just two teaspoons of cumin seed and we are going to make it into a powder first powder here right so now 
we're going to take just two slices of ginger just two slices of ginger here okay. so these two slices of ginger we're going to blend it together with the cumin seed So we get like a paste-like consistency. We have, so we get it like this. So we got a ginger and cumin. Okay, blended together, huh? right? So now. We're going to take this and just put it in a cup here and take some boiling water. Let's mix it together. This has to be done for at least uh, between uh, one one to two minutes uh, at least get all the extract from the cumin and ginger so now we can just add a little bit of uh, honey right. just about uh, two table two teaspoons Now we just take a glass. Now just pour to strain it huh, on a mash. Sorry for that. Right. Okay, so now Okay, so here you get your cumin and ginger tea with honey. So you can just drink this uh, daily uh, before your workout and help accelerate your body's burning capacity. This is a part one video uh, of obesity. I'll be in the second part of this video. I'll be talking. I'll be showing you a lot of uh, other recipes, how to juice, make some uh, vegetable and fruit juices and how to prepare meals that are high in fiber and protein. Until my next video, thank you for watching. Take care, stay healthy and live long.